Hey, what is going on everybody? It is Rob, AKA the Diligent Dev. And in this video, we're gonna take an introductory look at Azure Serverless Functions with Node.js. Now this is just gonna be a basic video. I'm gonna show you how to set up your Azure Serverless Functions and also how to debug them. But in subsequent videos, we're gonna dig deeper. We're gonna set up our own API and we're also gonna persist data in Azure Table Storage. So without any further ado, let's jump over to the computer and get right into it. Okay, so here we are over at the computer and I have Visual Studio open. And the first thing we're gonna do is install the Azure Tools extension. So if we go over to the extensions tab and we search for Azure, you see it right here. And you're gonna wanna go ahead and install this. So go ahead and pause the video and get that installed. Once it is installed, what we can do is head over to this new tab we have for Azure and you'll see that you have the option to create an account or sign in. So if you don't have an account, go ahead and click the create and it's completely free. I think they give you like $200 for the first year in credits. And after you have that all set up, we're just gonna click sign into Azure and then it's going to launch a new screen in your browser and go ahead and just sign in with the credentials that you had used to sign up with. And now that you see that happen, I, I have a couple things populated here. We have app, function, storage, and virtual machines. And I think you can toggle which ones you wanna see, but I believe this is the default. So what you can do is head over to personal pay as you go, or I'm sorry, whatever you named your subscription to. I'm gonna put it under my personal pay as you go, and you're gonna click this little folder right here. And what this is going to do is ask you where you want to put this. So what I'm gonna do is go to my desktop and I'll just add a new folder and we'll call this Azure, I'll do a lowercase, Azure Node.js Tuts. And we'll go ahead and select that. And what Azure is going to do is set up your functions project. So we're gonna pick JavaScript and it's gonna ask us what we wanna do. So there's a lot of different things you can choose from here. Um, you can do a timer trigger and that will fire your function however often you say to. I, it's set up on a cron job. So you could do it like once a day, month, week. You could do it like every second. You could set up a timer so that it goes off exactly when you want it to. Um, we have an HTTP trigger, which I think everyone's probably familiar with. Um, there's a lot of other triggers. You can do it on a blob storage when something happens, like let's say you insert something into your storage, it'll fire this. There's a lot of different things you can do in here. But for this tutorial, we're just gonna do an HTTP trigger and then we'll name it demo. And here you can set an authorization level. So you can make it anonymous. You can set it up on the function. So you have to pass like a specific GUID to it. And you could also make it admin. We're just gonna make it anonymous just for the demo. And then it's gonna ask us if we'd like to open this. And I'm gonna say open it in the current window. So right now it's creating the project. And right here we have our first function. So you'll see in here that it's very similar to Express. So we have a context and a rec, which stands for request. It's doing some console logging and then it's looking at the request query if there's a name in there in the query params or it's looking in the request body to look for a name. And then what it does is it goes ahead and responds back with this response message and then inserts it into the body and the status of the context, which you're passing back a context response, is going to be 200. And you can also set the status to something else. Like let's say you had an error, you could return a 400 for a bad request, or you could return some sort of authorization error like a 401 or a 403 there. So that's basically it in a nutshell. Now, if we dig even further in here, we see we have this functions.json, and this is where all of the settings for our function live. Um, we see we have the auth level as anonymous, the type is an HTTP trigger, direction is in, the name is rec for the request, and then our methods. I'm just gonna go ahead and get rid of this get method because I don't wanna get and a post on it. And then we have the type, type HTTP out and that's response. So that's the rec in and the response out. And go ahead and save this. And now we can get into exactly why I love using Azure Functions. So if I go ahead and close this down, I go back to the index and I just go to run and debug 
and hit the play button. What it's gonna do is it's going to run a couple commands and then it's going to launch a debugger where we can go and hit this function and set breakpoints and see everything we need to see about it. So I was getting an error, but that had to do with NVM. It's my node version manager. And I went ahead and fixed that and it went ahead and built the project successfully. So it ran those commands. And now it's going to give you for each function you have in your project, it's going to give you a URL where you can go hit it and what the rest method is. So this is a post. So we'll just go ahead and grab this. And then you can use something like Postman, but I'm using Thunder Client. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this. I'm gonna go to new request. And then I'm going to paste this in and I'm going to do a post on it. And we will set a query param for name and we'll just say diligent dev. And then I'm gonna go ahead and send it. And you'll see now we've jumped back over to our index.js file. And if we hover over some things, we can look to see exactly what's in here. So we see that we did not pass a body um, we have some query param of name, so it should be able to show me that if I hover right over here. And if we go ahead and just let it run, and then we go back to Thunder Client, you'll see that it returned the response of hello diligent dev. This is an HTTP triggered function executed successfully. So you can see it's very powerful that you can go in here and look at all the properties and all the methods that you have off of a specific variable. And not only that, but we can look over here in the left-hand side and it has all of our variables in here. So we see we have our context variable and all the properties and methods off of that. We have our request and we have all of that. We can also come over here and we can grab this, copy it, come back to the watch window and paste it in there. And you'll see that we can go ahead and grab what our variables are set to in there as well. So that's gonna go ahead and wrap up this video. In subsequent tutorials, what we're gonna do is build out a REST API utilizing Azure serverless functions. We're also going to use Azure storage tables. It's a NoSQL database that is super fast and also very, very inexpensive that I use for a lot of side projects. So make sure you subscribe to the channel and enable notifications so you're notified when that video comes out. If you got any value out of this, I'd also appreciate it if you liked the video. It helps out the channel and keeps me creating more content. So thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.